met a gypsy. So I imagine you just see you're like the uh you're like the OG. You're the the king dick in the sand pit. And then you just see like new guys like a Jed Beaton, he he moves to Europe and he's like, All right, I'm on a four fifty now and then you got Todd Waters and then you got like the French kids and you just you're seeing all these people come to your sand pit. You probably can just look at them ride and just be like, You suck so bad at this. <laughs> Yeah, but they got better, man. Like, I remember, like, like when I just entered the GPs, it was different. Like, right now, basically, all the top guys are living in Lommel, so they all know a little bit how to ride sand. Like, if you take a French kid like Renault or, the, or even Geyser, you know? When I saw Geyser, like, in 2012, dude, I was laughing at the guy. I saw him ride. I think it was a Lommel. <laughs> I don't even know. I was saying 2012 or 2013. I was like, what the fuck are you doing, my man? But now when I see him right, he's fast in the set, man. So, the, so those guys, they 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 adjust and like even though they go, I don't know if you heard about that place Sardinia. Um, so they yeah. spend a lot of time there in the winter. So that's actually where the GP was a few few weeks back. So yeah. all of those guys, they know by now how to ride sand. While uh, ten years ago was pretty funny because then when you saw a French guy ride the sand, <laughs> I was like, you you go get your ass back to Masai, my man. You just go there. You don't belong here. <laughs> it's my phone pit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. dude and that's how and that's how it seems and and you know like you just you hear those those classic stories of i mean i've heard so many riders just go to europe and then they come back and then they're just like dude you have to see it like you just have to see this dude on any given practice day ride that track and to me like as a as a motocross fan and as a nerd of the sport that to me is it's just such like a crazy this one dude at this one track and it's just like got its own myth about it you know the most funny was when rv came over so he came over in 2015 <laughs> and he, he he just knew tyler retray so my um my at the time price mechanic which was ruben he he used to work with uh, with ricky carmichael and ben downey back in us and then he, he had some connection with Villapoto. so as Villapoto didn't know so many people over here so he we got connected and, and then um we went to lomo so I saw him riding normal. I even said to my mechanic, is that Villapoto riding or did he send this mechanic on track? Because I don't know what the fuck he's doing, <laughs> but he's not, he's not fast, man. So I saw, I saw Villapoto on, the, on, on Lomo and I even got videos I, I, I should have sent you. But he, he got better quickly, but he was like, Villapoto was the guy, you know? And, and to me, I, yeah. I, like, I was a super fan. Like he was always on, on the rear fender, freaking opening that thing, like 450. And then I saw him on Lomo. And then I think Bobby Chef, I think his name was Bobby Chef, the Russian guy. I don't know if you ever heard about him. He was yeah, freaking yeah, yeah. best in Villapoto. And he was like on a, I don't even know what bike he was on. So I was looking like, okay, this guy got some work to do. But I think like from an American, then if, you have, if you've never been into a place like Lommel, and like they probably leave the track all the week from Tuesday to Friday. And then like somewhere in March, like a lot of kids have holiday and whatsoever. So there are all the kids riding and then that track gets heavy like hell. And then yeah. the track is even like, for me, it's like super difficult. And then I saw Villapoto riding. I was like, Oof. <laughs> but uh, it was funny, man. It was, it, it, it was good. I don't know if you can remember that day, you, but uh, I surely can. He won yeah. hundred. He won hundred percent remembers that day. I will guarantee it. Uh, we, uh, <clears throat> I have to send you the videos, man. Like me and him, I was on a 250 and he was on a 450. But normally when, when you're on a 450, um, like you should be way faster on Lomo because the sand is so demanding and it was rather a little bit rained and he just had problems staying there with me, man. Like I, I, yeah, later I'll definitely send you the video. It was so funny. Um, yeah, we had, we had, we had a good time. He's the, he, anyway, That's I sad. hope he doesn't get pissed at me, but he's, he, he's still my man. Villapoto is, is the man. Nah, dude, I was about to say, I think he will piss himself <laughs> laughing when he hears that story, but I, I love, <laughs> I love post racing Villapoto that he's just become the coolest guy you know he's one of the guys that when he retired i thought you'd kind of never see him again and he would just be like i'm done with the sport i'm i'm going off into the sunset i made plenty of money like i'm out but he's gotten cooler after his racing career than when he was the four time in a row supercross like champion you know and i think it's so rad that people nowadays can recognize that we don't want them to leave the sport like when you retire 
we don't want you to retire and just and dip. And I think Carmichael did a good job of that. He stayed in the sport and he does so much for it. And now like Stewie's come back with his podcast. RV is still in the sport. Chad's doing his thing. It's sort of cool to me now to see guys quit racing but not leave the sport. Yeah, I think it's good. But I think the US is even more intense than racing in Europe. Like we basically start in, in March. We finish in October. And then we got like three months off. But the US... Like, I even heard Eli Tomek say in his interview, like, physically, but especially mentally, it's so tough to make, like, yeah. 18 Supercross straight, make 12 nationals, basically have, like, before they barely even had time off, because it was Monster Cup, but now, have, apparently, I think Monster Cup's not there anymore, I don't know, but they have a little bit of time off, and then go back preparing for Supercross, so I think with, with the US schedule, it's really tough, and I could really understand why Philip Poto quit on such a young age, same with Carmichael, um, they made a lot of money. They won like so many championships in a short amount of time. And I can basically understand, but it's good that they, they stay in the sport because the sport needs ambassadors like them. And I think it's really good that, that they stay around, you know? So, um, yeah, yeah, I think it's a good thing. Like you said. Yeah, no, nah, definitely. I can't wait to see those videos. Um, you said before, <laughs> like <laughs> you, you, uh, and Kenny were kind of like the bubbers of, of Europe. I definitely think that you're a hundred percent the bubba of sand and the bubba of probably the bubba of Europe, but a hundred percent, like you're the dude in sand. That's like the craziest motherfucker that's ever done it. And to the, to me, I look, I love technique and I love watching people ride and analyzing people that ride. It's just such a cool part of the sport to me, but I can imagine that you can see like Bubba's, Bubba scrub level of shit in the sand or, and you probably know things that you're doing that other people aren't doing that's like a, a different level but just because we we don't even see it the same way as you like we probably don't understand so is there any technique sort of things that you think that like people just don't even know the level that you're playing at when it comes to riding those tracks yeah like I said like whenever I I just get a smile on my face. Like people, when they go to Lommel GP and then they know second motor, they're like, they're already sweating three days before in the bed, like <laughs> second motor Lommel, I don't want to be there. But like me, I'm going like, yeah, boy, it's going to be second motor. That's time to shine. So <laughs> I enjoy going there because I know I really enjoy it. And the more rough it gets, I can really work on my technique. Like on, 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 on the hard tracks, you know, you just can go fast and you can go fast and basically everyone can do that shit. But when you go over to, to running deep, Deep, seriously deep sand you need to have some kind of a skill which not a lot of people have and as I grew up like when I was six years old I was riding those rough tracks when I was 10 years old I was riding those rough tracks so that's where you made a difference you know the same like with with, with Euros going over to America with Supercross you know when yeah, they, we, yeah. we we would only start riding Supercross like at 15 or 16 well in US it would start way earlier and that's why they have that advantage over European guys and um I think that's the same thing with, with me in, in, in the sand. And um, yeah, I think riding sand isn't difficult. You just have to kind of understand how it works. And um, yeah, you just have to do it a lot and even race a lot. Because when you practice in the sand, it's different. When you start racing, it's uh, it's different than, than, than practice, you know? If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And to listen to the full three-hour podcast, search Gypsy Tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below. Gypsy Gang.